Welcome to the Ronan Bell Show. This conversation is going to kick off in five, four, three, two, one. John, what's going on today, brother? How's it going? Hey, man. Same day. I mean, not even a different thing. I do the same thing like every day. I, I, I've said it way too much at the beginning of every podcast where the COVID has given me an impeccable routine to follow rather than like throwing out all these different things that happen in one day. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. There's a there's a lot less novelty. Every day is kind of the same. Um, that's what I found, at least. Um, but on the other hand, I think people are learning how to work from home now that they've we've been in this situation a while. Um, I've always worked from home, so this is nothing new to me, but uh, I've definitely gotten better at doing it through this whole process just because, man, when you're doing the same thing again and again and again, you got to kind of find the novelty and, oh, yeah. and fit a routine that that works for you. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. And well, especially you being a videographer, how hard is it for you, like sitting in, you know, sitting at your desk in like these long stretches of time? Because I'm sure that the videos that you edit take couple weeks sometimes depending on the length of them uh yeah no they, they're definitely time consuming and me i'm an adhd person so i want to be moving around and working out and doing all this stuff so i found that if i i go for a morning walk every day for about 45 minutes listen to an audiobook and that kind of sets me in a good tone of like all right let's sit down and get some work done and um and that helps me focus a lot um, if I don't exercise and I don't work out, my ADHD is all over the place and I can't sit still. Yeah, I feel the same way because like, especially just like working out in the morning, like not even like lifting heavy weights or something, but like going on a run, like doing some ab exercises, whatever it may be, really sets the tone the rest of the day. And you feel like a little bit more energized when you're going into, you know, sitting at your desk the entire time. You know, now you got you don't have to drink three cups of coffee. You can just have one and get mm -hmm. motivated. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that. Um, I heard, so one of my heroes is uh, Casey Neistat and he said something once that like, I don't know, it blew my mind at the time. And now I'm kind of finding it to be more and more true. Um, he said, you can supplement sleep with exercise. So if you get an hour less of sleep, but you exercise for that hour, um, you'll be more energized. And I was like, that's BS. You need, you know, all the sleep, yeah. you can get, that kind of thing. But it's, I think it's absolutely true. And um, especially when I work out twice a day, I'm so happy and I'm so energized and I'm so focused and the quality of my work improves, everything improves. Well, especially because I think people sleep too long. Like that, like you were saying that the more sleep you get is the better. I don't think that's true because you ever feel like when you wake up, like after sleeping like 10 hours and you feel like you feel horrific the next day and you're like, how can I feel bad? Like I just got this much sleep when you wake up, you know, and sleep for six, seven hours. That's when you feel, you know, seven, eight hours. That's when you feel like at your peak, which makes like in my mind, I'm like, how does that make any sense? But there's gotta be something we talked about in my psychology class. One of the few things that I've learned from this semester in school. And I was <laughs> like, wow, that makes so much sense. Yeah. I, um, I think that's, I think that's true. I think it's the right amount of sleep. And I think it does change person to person. Some people swear by seven hours. Some people swear by eight and some people swear by nine. Um, I try to get eight, but um, I know I'm a bit happier when I get nine. And, uh, and especially when my body's run down the recovery and stuff like that is, is so much better when you get nine. So yeah, that's, that's what I found works best for me. Yeah. So what are you doing besides, obviously, you know, you're still, a, you're still a human being. You don't work all day and all night. What else do you besides, oh, well, what else do you I'll, do besides I'll, I'll editing? <laughs> 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 no, um, no. Yeah. I, I mean, so I'm really big into like self-imposed challenges, right? So one thing I'm doing right now is I'm doing a hundred days of uh, jujitsu, which is really similar to wrestling. So it's really fun. Basically what started this is I just wanted to get better at jujitsu. I find, I find it's fun. Right. And the only way I can really kind of dive in deep to something is be like, all right, I'm going to do it every single day for a hundred days. And the thing is I might get to a hundred days and be like, I want to keep going, but I'm so much happier when I'm in that mode of I'm doing this challenge. And uh, usually that challenge is physical, right? Um, I'm going to run every day. I'm going to, you know, do this every day. I'm going to work out twice a day, that kind of thing. I just, I feel better. So uh, morning walks, um, I'll still lift weights too, but I'm on also on like day four of doing jujitsu. So it's not, uh, 
I haven't been going for super long yet. Jiu-jitsu is crazy, man. Jiu-jitsu is crazy. One of the guys at my gym, they they do it in like uh, my local gym here in Collegeville. And literally I was like, how good can this guy be? So I was like, all right, let's roll. And like, I don't know. I dude, I don't know anything about wrestling jujitsu whatsoever other than like wrestling your friends when you're a little kid. And he goes, all right, you can start on top. I'm like, okay, word, this will be easy. He grabs my wrist, puts it out, puts his foot in my arm, spins me to the ground. I'm like, and it was all in like tenths of a second. I'm like, holy crap. Like, what am I supposed to do? It's such a we. it's not weird. It's such an interesting form of art because it's really like you can be strong and be good, but strength only takes is only so much. And you have to be able to leverage and use your body more than anything else. And I'm sure with the background in wrestling, that's helping you out as well. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And uh, the sports are, you know, very, very similar. There's a lot of overlap. There are certain positions that wrestlers excel in. Um, like once you take the back, once you get an arm lock, something like that. So I've been fo- I used to focus a lot in those positions and I'm trying to focus more on being comfortable in more jujitsu native positions, but uh, yeah, dude, it's a lot of fun. And also if you're in a fight, people don't understand how vulnerable they are, you know, uh, especially the type of people that usually get in a lot of fights, you know, they're, they're thinking I'm going to throw these haymakers and I'm going to whatever. That's like, dude, unless you get me with the first shot and I'm completely off balance, I'm going to block, get in on you, get on your legs, take you down and um, put you in a bad spot. So <laughs> it's kind of the perfect thing for self-defense. And it's a lot of fun when you get into like the actual sport of it. Well, just mixed martial arts in general is so interesting because you have to, there's so many different things. There's so many different arts that go into it. And just being able to punch isn't good enough now. I mean, sure. Take it like Francis Ngano. If he hits you with something, he's going to knock you out. And it is what it is. Like he's 265 pounds and can throw haymakers for days. But now it's like all of these things in mixed martial arts come together. And the most elite athletes are good at everything. They're not good at one specific thing. And it goes just like with any other sport, like basketball, you have to be able to play defense and shoot the basketball in order to make it to the NBA, whatever it may be. So that's where I think mixed martial arts comes like full circle with all the other sports, but it's a lot more intense in terms of figuring things out and learning these different forms or whatever it may be, these different techniques, which really makes a fighter who he is. Right. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, Francis, like he's got the hardest punch in the world, but in the first fight with Stipe, Stipe wrestled him and Francis had no idea how to wrestle really. So, um, or just wasn't high level and Stipe wrestled in college at Cleveland state. So he was able to control the fight that way, especially Stipe has got good boxing and he, he had good enough boxing to not get hit by enough of Francis's heavy shots. And then he'd wrestle him. So it's like, you're saying like, you have to be able to do everything, but I think the most interesting uh, fighters are kind of the people that are like more purists where they're like, I'm really, really, really good at this one thing. And I'm going to base my fighting style around that. Um, I think that's interesting, but there are a lot of athletes now that are Jack of all trades and, and good at everything. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. So obviously you have some kind of background in, wrestling mixed martial arts where you did you wrestle when you were younger or did you do you still wrestle what do you do with that um so I got I got into wrestling when I was in eighth grade uh seventh grade very end of seventh grade I wrestled like one tournament and I was like oh I like this um I didn't even know it was a sport until then uh like I had no idea no exposure to it and then eighth grade I kind of like did it and it was like oh like this is something I'm like good at just because I was smaller so I would always try to keep up with the bigger kids and, and it's like, oh, all I have to do is beat up the little kids. Like, that's so easy. Like I've been trying to keep up with the bigger kids, you know? So, uh, high school, I made freshman, uh, I made varsity as a freshman and I was like, dang, like, I think this is my thing. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think I'm going to take this super seriously. And then sophomore year, I just dove into it and I just went to every practice, watched as much film as possible. And that's a really start late, late start for most wrestlers that, wrestling college they've been wrestling since they were five since they were six right but I just became obsessed with it and I was like this is my thing I'm gonna win state I'm gonna do all this stuff right and um, I ended up coming short I took third but um, was still good enough to go to college and wrestle and have a great time and so it's it's a bit it kind of made me who I am I would say because in high school that's when your personality is developing and just the 
you know, the, the narrative in my head that I'm going to throw everything into this and create the outcome that I want through hard work and just overloading, overloading on wrestling yeah. and committing myself to this thing like that. That's kind of what developed my personality to what I am now. And I take that into videography. Well, wrestling is just a sport where you have to be all about it, right? Like in mm. terms of eating, in terms of the way you lift weights, in terms of just lifestyle in general, because I, I know just, just from my buddies doing it in high school, like they had to cut like 10, 15 pounds for some of these matches. And I'm sitting there like they're eating an orange for lunch on like two days before they have to make weight. I'm like, dude, you yeah. must like, how do you even operate at that point? Like, I'm sure that like you've had those days where you're like, man, I'm starving, but I can't eat because I have to, you know, have my match in two, three days. Right. Yeah. And I cut weight like an idiot. Every coach I've had will tell you that. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the last day um, in college, I'm cutting like 11 to 12 pounds, 10 uh, at least. And um, so, yeah, I kind of cut weight like an idiot, but that's all water weight at the end. You know, I was also um, my sophomore year when I was cutting sophomore year of college, I was cutting probably the most amount of weight. I came in the first day of practice. I weighed myself. I was 180 and I made 149 for the <gasps> second half of the season. And that was brutal. Cause like, I was not like skinny at 180, but I also wasn't like too fat. And then <laughs> by 149, like I was just like cut down. I was so sucked down and, and so hungry all the time. So thirsty all the time. So it's brutal. It's hard to focus when you're like that, you know, in school and stuff like that. Uh, so it's, it's a grind, man. You got to commit your whole life to it. Yeah. And the payoff is, I mean, if you really think about it, like mixed martial arts, wrestling, all these like combat sports, you're training for 20 minutes, maybe, I don't know how long a wrestling match is, but I know like the three round seven. fights are yeah. Seven. Yeah. Like that's nothing. That's really like nothing in the grand scheme of things like basketball. You have more than one game, whatever mm -hmm. it may be fights in mixed martial arts is you're training for a moment which is in my eyes really cool because you put all this time in and effort and you have this one shot to like show what you're really made out of so it's what like is that yes yeah, so, <laughs> exactly what is that like like leading up to that and i'm sure that you've had the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows how does that really affect you when you're going into you know a fight well i <laughs> i'm not a fighter i don't plan on fighting um, but I'll tell you with wrestling, like the more I relaxed and was just like, I'm just going to do my thing um, and not take it too seriously. Um, I'm just going to wrestle. I know how to wrestle. Oh man, I did so much better. Um, anytime I was like, this is the moment I'm going to freaking, I'm going to go. This is, you know, like <laughs> yeah. get all hyped and stuff like that. I didn't, I didn't do too well. Um, Cause just you get in your own head, you know, all of your, like everything I've done is leading up to this moment. Like you were just saying like all this training for just this moment. And if I don't do well here, then like, uh, it's going to be terrible. Um, so w one of my clients and good friend mentor, his name is Ben Askren. Um, I think you've heard of him. And he, uh, <laughs> he, he says something that I really like. He, he says, don't tie your ego to your outcome. And so basically what that means is regardless of the outcome, you you shouldn't feel better or worse about, uh, about yourself. It should be in your preparation, your sense of self, your idea of your reality, you know, it should be, you should be anchored in those and uh, in principles. So when it comes to that, it's like, okay, you, it's very freeing to go out and compete when you think like that. Cause you're like, I'm still me win or lose, you know? So um, I can just go and react and compete and do my best. Well, yeah. The less pressure. And that just comes down to putting pressure on yourself because the more pressure that you put on yourself, in most of the time, the more stressed out you're going to be. And there's mm. multiple types of stress. And that stress that, you know, isn't always a good thing, especially going into something with that kind of mindset. Because, like, if you lose, I mean, then you're then you're depressed. You get all caught up in this one thing. But I like what you were saying that, you know, if you go into it and just kind of be yourself, no matter win or lose, you're going to walk out of that, you know, you're going to walk off the mat the same John as you were, you know, before, whether mm -hmm. or not, you know, you come out with the highest of highs or the lowest of lows. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you, you take that into everything, like how you do one thing is how you do everything. So I treat videography very similar to the way I treated wrestling. And the most important thing 
was that I got into wrestling late and I had so much ground to make up to achieve my goals. Everyone that was gonna, that was ranked highly in the state that was going to win, you know, a state championship that year, they'd been wrestling since they were in diapers. And I came in super late. So I had a lot of ground to make up and because I knew I had a lot of ground to make up. I had to put a very high level pace out. And so that high level pace just translates into other things that I do in my life. So the way I treat videography is like, okay, I treat it like kind of like a training camp where it's like, I need to constantly be improving. And so that I, and I need to be prepared and I need to treat every video like, all right, we got preparation, we got competition and we got editing afterwards, right? Like competition is obviously shooting it, being in the moment, getting all the shots I need, telling the story I need to, but kind of treating it like that it's, it's a super important thing. And I need to put the priority and the time and the high output and pace into improving myself, but also making sure that the product's the best it can be. So, um, having that different mindset of, of like how to treat it and how much time and effort to put into it. Um, I think it's been really, really good. And it's, it's paid a lot of dividends. Well, I think that most people have the misconception of like, you're either a determined person or you're not. And I don't think that's true because I think you can learn to be determined and it has to be something that you're really passionate about more than anything else. Like obviously you like videography and you love to wrestle. So I'm going to put my time into this and I want to do good. So that way, that means that I'm going to be determined to get this certain result. And that's where I think people have the problem is they're like, oh, I'm just, I'm not a determined person. Therefore I can't do this. That's not true. You have to find something that you actually like to willingly do in your free time, instead of playing, you know, video games, you know, going out on a Friday night and getting drunk with your friends, whatever it may be. And really having this, fulfillment of I want to do this so I I want to do this so I'm going to practice to become good at it yeah absolutely and you know like it goes back to like you you make it your fun if you have fun doing it and you enjoy doing it and it's kind of what you do in your free time instead of instead of doing maybe negative activities like like going out all the time it's like um that's great once in a while. And don't get me wrong. I'll get down. I'll sleep until 10 and be hung over. But, <laughs> but it's also like, how often are you doing it? You know what I mean? Is it, is it necessary for you to go out every week? Is it, is it necessary for you to do, do the, those type of things? Like it just doesn't help out when you're like, I'm going to do this in my free time and I'm going to have fun doing it. And this is like what I like to think about. And this is what, what my brain views as fun. You'll get really good at that thing very, very quickly. And you'll spend a lot more brain time on it and you won't get burnt out. It's that balance part of what like everyone needs to go into life about. Like you were saying, like you can still have fun, but just don't let it consume you. Yeah. Everything in moderation for sure. And and the other thing is like the, the time and energy you spend on, on, you only have a certain amount of time and energy. Right. So it's like, what do you, what do you spend it on? And I think that there's a lot of people who are a bit misguided in that and they miss the boat. Um, you're still in college, right? Yeah. College is the absolute best time, especially your last two years. Like your first two years, go have fun, do the college thing. That's great. Your last two years or three years, build something. You know what I mean? Start like improving yourself because the you should always be improving yourself like from the get, yeah. right? But like at, at the same time, like you that you're never going to have a better opportunity where it's like, you can be a student and you can be something else, right? You have time to be two things. If you are just a student and you're not something else, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna explode on the scene. You're not going to be massively successful. Right. And I get, that's not everyone's thing, but if you want to build something and you want to achieve this, some great feat, you gotta, you gotta kind of work on it while you have time to do it. And when you get in the real world and you get a job and you get bogged down with responsibilities, in a lot of ways, it's too late to make that jump. Now you can still do it. It's just way, way more difficult. So I feel really lucky. I got injured um, and that ended my wrestling career or so I thought Um, my sophomore year ended my sophomore season. um, And I had back-to-back surgeries. I was on the couch. I was all depressed. And I was like, man, like, what am I going to do with all this time and energy? Because I don't want to put it in the wrong things. And I I had been making videos since I was in middle school, but I hadn't made them for like a year or two. I really was focusing on college wrestling. I was like, well, I always kind of thought I would, I would do something with this. Let's, let's dive into it a bit. Right. 
And so I really just dove deep into watching YouTube videos and figuring out like what I wanted my life to be. And I found Casey Neistat, who's just been, he, he's the one who made me start thinking about things differently. And he said something that really spoke to me too. That was like, he's like, if you set out to make the perfect Casey Neistat vlog, you'll have failed before you begun because you're not making your perfect video. Right. So I was like, okay, so I can film exactly what I want and make it exactly what I want. I just got to get really, really good at making everybody else want this too, as a, as a product, and then I'll be fine. And so that was kind of the thought process. And then I just got, I just got working, got grinding. Well, I like how the, and this is a big turning point. This is a lesson for anyone really that when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Like that's the old saying, but I kind of like to take it in the terms of, you know, taking these pivots, right? No matter what's going to happen, life is going to throw you all these curveballs, right? And you can either, you know, you can either sit down and just do the same thing. Like when you have like, when you get injured, it's the worst thing for an athlete. It's like, oh, like I'm I'm never going to be able to do this again. Like I'm sad. Like, I don't know what to do now. But you were able to take that pivot. And that just goes to show what type of person that you are, because you're not going to let, you know, you can get thrown against a wall seven times, but you're going to get up eight. Like that's the, that's what more people need to realize. And it does like, you don't need to be some aficionado. You don't need to be this, you know, higher self than bigger than ever, anyone else. Cause at the end of the day, we're all human. We're all built the same. It just mm-hmm. takes that one thing that you want to enjoy and be able to, you know, put a lot of your time into that rather than I'm going to sit down on my couch and eat potato chips all day because I can't do this anymore. No one's going to feel sorry for you at the end of the day. Cause yeah. at the end of the day, you just feel sorry for yourself. Right. And if you have a high drive and high output, it's like, what are you, what are you building towards? Right? Like what's the goal? And um, sometimes people have like really clear goals and sometimes it's a bit more broad, but even if it's, even if it's broad, you can, you can build kind of, your sense of self and confidence around that. A big thing uh, Jordan Peterson says is like, when you're first figuring out who you are, you figure out yourself by figuring out what you're not, right? So, oh, I am not that. I am I am not the person that's going to get drunk every day. I am not the person that's going to be lazy and and fail on my goals. I am not the person who's going to um, who's going to show up late, right? Like you, you build your, your identity around what you're not, and then you can fill in what you are. The idea of myself was like, all right, I'm going to be successful beyond my years. That's as broadly as I put it in my head. Right. But I'm also injured. I wasted, I feel like I wasted my potential in wrestling. Right. Cause I, I, at the end of the season was just cutting too much weight injured in my head, not doing everything I could have possibly done because in high school, I took it to the, you know, full maximum level. Yeah. Right. So I, I felt like I took it here in high school and I took it maybe here in college. Right. And so I was like, dang, like I didn't do every possible thing to be the most successful wrestler I could be. And now it's done. Now my career's over. And so like, I, I had to sit with that and that hurt and that sucked. And I was like, okay, whatever the next thing that I get involved in is I'm never going to have that feeling again. And it was depressing, man. Like talk about lowest of lows. Like I, did not sleep for 48 hours at one point, just because I was having anxiety attacks um, because of the surgeries and like the pain pills I was on. Like I was depressed, like all the time. No one like wanted to talk to me or hang out with me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it was, it was brutal. And I had some good friends that, that got me through it, but I just had like no purpose. I felt like in my life and I, I didn't know what I was going to do. And that low allowed me to, to dive into the next thing and be like, all right, I can make this whatever I want. And there is no limit to what I can achieve. And I just dove super deep into like, I'm on the couch, not doing anything right over the summer until my, my summer job started. I was like a camp counselor, but, um, but I was just like, I'm gonna watch every YouTube video. I'm gonna make, watch every YouTube tutorial. I'm gonna make like one stupid video a day. I don't have to post it. I just got to make it. I got to get better. And, and it's like, all these things build on each other and then you just take these steps down the path. And then before you know it, you're, you're at a pretty cool destination. Well, yeah, the trenches show you who you really are at the end of the day, when you are at your absolute low and every, whoever is listening, you know, you've always, everyone has either experienced or is going to experience that. I hope you don't, but that's literally what shows you. you. Yeah. It teaches you the biggest lesson. I hope you do. 
I don't think, I think it's like, it's, it's almost like, you know, when you're taking a lie detector test, which I've never done, you know, knock on wood. Right. But like you're taking a lie detector test and then it's like the spikes start going like this way and this way, but they're like this, if you're kind of calm. Yeah. I think that's kind of how life is where if you like, if you don't experience the lows, you won't experience the highs. So the more you can swing this pendulum, the more you can experience super highs and super lows. Obviously you don't want to swing it low, swing it high and then swing it low again. Right. But like you go to rock bottom. Um, I, I don't know if this is a saying or not, but I think that God, the universe, whatever you want to say, sends you to rock bottom so you can build a solid foundation and then you can build a tower from there. Right. So you go, you go to rock bottom, you figure out what you're about, you build a solid foundation and you build from there. And what I like what you were saying earlier is how like you took the mindset of I, I, like every day, I'm just going to get like a little bit better. Like I don't need to be at the top of the world. I'm not going to be at the top of the world in one day. And that's where I think that being at the bottom is really great because you have to take baby steps to get the way up. You ever see like those, you know, fr- uh, what is it called? Free climbers that climb the really tall mountains and, you know, they start at the bottom. Well, sometimes they have to stop when they get to some point because they're tired take a quick break and then go up again and take these like little intervals of how to get better. And that's where I think can kind of relate to life too, because if you, if you have a goal, you're never going to just be able to achieve that goal right away. There's going to be other things that you have to do prior to that. And if you can somehow work backwards and see like, Oh, if I want to get You know, say if I want to get 2000 plays on my podcast, well, first I need to get 1900 plays. How do I do that? You know, these like going backwards is reverse engineering your way to success. And I think that if people thought of it more of that way, because when you look up and, you know, if you're looking at a mountain, like a free climber, you're like, wow, that's high. Well, if you thought of it just as, you know, I'm just going to go 20 feet, 20 feet isn't that bad when you're climbing it. 200 foot mountain or I don't know how big they climb mountains and not a free climber but you know just like these little things if you think of it as little intervals that's what really helps you because you know I'm not I'm not one for you know taking you know these big sides of relief and just like taking a break oh once you do something like yeah like okay like that's it Mm -hmm. but it's this point of recognition like wow like I did that and even if you just like say that to yourself for a quick second or like you know eat a bag of Cheetos because it worked out, you know, five days in a row or whatever it may be like these little things that help get you through on your way to the top. And that's kind of what keeps you motivated as well in terms of reaching for this higher standard. Yeah, the um, no, I love that. And that's something I actually been thinking about a lot recently. Um, Have you ever played Cruising World? It's a a old video game. No racing game. Okay, so on Nintendo 64, it's this racing game you're going through. And every time you hit one of these (laughs) <laughs> these spots you'll go through this flag and they go checkpoint <laughs> and this dude it is burned in my brain because i played it so much growing up literally like checkpoint i think as human beings we're we're obsessed with what you said like checkpoints right these points where we're like we've reached another level or we've done this other thing um a lot of people like to make posts on instagram i bought this car i did a thing i got engaged i bought a house They give you checkpoints in their life and for, and it's a huge deal, right? Buying your first house, buying your own car, like getting married, like getting engaged. Those are huge checkpoints, right? Getting a job. And so I think that there are, there are a lot of people that take checkpoints the right way and they take checkpoints the wrong way. So the, I was actually at jujitsu yesterday and they were like, yeah, you know, not as many people are here today because we did promotions two days ago. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, we promoted a bunch of people and they got to the next level. And so now they're taking a bit of a break. And I'm like, that doesn't even register in my head. Like yeah. if, I, if I got promoted, I would be back the next day. Be like, yeah, everyone look at my new promotion, you know? Um, but you, you kind of find these checkpoints and then it's like, okay, as you hit those checkpoints, is it time to relax or is it time to reassess and hit the throttle more? So this Askren Jake Paul fight, like for me, was a big checkpoint because, you know, it's I don't have like concrete checkpoints in, in my career. I'm doing clients and and um, and different things like maybe I added a new client. Maybe that's a checkpoint. Maybe it's the end of a year. That's a checkpoint, whatever. Right. But but I just looked at this fight as like before this fight and after this fight. Right. Because this is a huge thing. 
one of the coolest things I've done in my career, right? And and I've finished another training camp with with Ben, right? So I'm like, okay, this is a checkpoint. So I kind of got introspective and I was like, all right, where are my habits going? Where are my habits leading me? Where do I want to dig in more? And where do I want to relax more? Right? What what what's my life going to look like if I continue on this path kind of thing? So I made I wrote down a bunch of things. It's in my room right now of just like post fight. These are the different things that I'm going to do. One, jujitsu, right? I'm going to do jujitsu every day for hundred days. Um, two, I now introduce myself as a filmmaker instead of a videographer. Um, I don't know why, but I think that it do, it's not that it carries more weight for other people. It carries more weight for me. And there's just a couple other changes, but it's like you, you reassess, you kind of dig in and you kind of look at like, okay, after this checkpoint, I'm going to be this other person. And um, I'm going to kind of dictate of like this event, pre this event, I was this person, post this event, I was this person. Yeah, no, that's exactly like, I love that, that stating and just having someone else. I don't like to say above you, cause that's not the word, but someone as like a mentor that can give you advice, you know, whether it's like a little bit more wisdom because just straight up wisdom comes down to how, like how many people you talk to, how much experience you have. And mm-hmm. if they can help you with like, just a slice of advice, like having, you know, Ben Askren as this guy that you probably, you know, as a wrestler, as, you know, someone who is very competitive, that you're like, oh, like this guy probably has the same goals and aspirations that I had at one point. So what can he help me out with in terms of just what I'm doing? And I know that filmmaking and fighting might seem like two different things, but everything kind of comes together in terms, no matter what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, if you're not determined, you're not going to do it. If you're not passionate about it, you're not going to do it everything comes full circle and things like that. So when people say like, oh, like this isn't related to this. Well, at the end of the day, all everything in life that you're doing has some kind of relation to each other, whether it be making a podcast and working out, both take hard work and both take some kind of determination and self-discipline in order to achieve the goal that you're looking out to. Though the goals might be different, they still have strives that are exactly the same adjectives that go along with each other to work towards that end goal. Yeah. And, and the thing that, that, that those two things have in common is that you're doing both of those things, right? So it's like, you're the, the thing that brings them together. So when, if that's true, then it's like working out and school, for instance, it's like, okay, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Do you take, do you blow off school and you focus on working out or do you say, I'm going to take, I'm going to do my absolute best in these two areas, right? And so you're the thing that unites it, where it's like, you kind of build your sense of self off of that. Like, no, I'm a hardworking person. Everything I put into, I'm going to do my absolute best on. I'm going to kill. I'm going to bring my own, you know, my own flair, my own different perspective on it. And I'm going to do well on it versus I'm a good student. I don't really work out. That that completely just acts as that part or I'm, I'm a gym bro and I'm not the best yeah. bro. I've been there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but then also what you were saying with like the mentor, like Ben is the perfect mentor. And, you know, I've, I brought this up to him and he's like, yeah, you know, I give you advice here and there. And it's like, it's not even that, like he does give great advice, but this is, this is actually, I heard this. I think someone was talking about parenting. Kids don't listen at all. They emulate. Right. Love so that. they, they copy your behavior. And as like, as a kid coming out of college, like actually was, when I first started working for Ben, I'd still had like six credits online that I pushed off so that I could wrestle my last semester senior yeah. year. Um, but it was like the perfect thing because, because I got to see how this <laughs> pro fighter, multiple time world champion, Olympian, two-time national champ, like super accomplished guy, also an entrepreneur also a guy who had his hand in a bunch of different things, podcasting, running his business, running his academies, running his, uh, his sponsorships and being this ultra competitive athlete. It's like looking at the way that he approached things was like the perfect thing for me and being like, Oh, I can do whatever I want. I don't have to put myself in a box of, I am a fighter of, I am a videographer of, I am a wrestler. Like I can't put myself in a box. I don't need to. I am me, I'm John Broughton, and I can do whatever the hell I want. And I actually owe it to myself to do whatever I really want to do. 
so yeah, emulating his behavior and his mindset on things was so much, so much more helpful than, than any advice he gave me. But at the same time, he gave good advice too. So <laughs> yeah, at the, at the end of the day, words are words. Like it yeah. depends on who you're looking at. Like if you, and that's the thing is you surround yourself with these other people that are determined, you will become more determined because that's who you're with. Like you were saying, like, I will emulate them just because I'm around them. The, the good old saying is like steel sharpens steel. The more, mm-hmm. if you want to be kind of sharpens iron, I thought, yeah, it's something like that. <laughs> Some precious metal, whatever it may, may be. But anyway, Jeff, yeah. if you surround yourself with say like entrepreneurs, if I want to be an entrepreneur, I better find 10 other entrepreneurs that I can be friends with because when I'm down, one of them is going to say, Hey, you can push through it. Like it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like you can pick yourself up. Like there, mm-hmm. I'm sure that there are days where you do not want to sit at your computer and edit videos but then like you get a text from you know whether it be ben or one of the other people that you're around you're just like come on like just do it like i'm like you see this like i'm working out today and it might seem like it might seem silly but like you're like all right this guy's doing it like i might as well do it too i am laughing because ben texts me like it's like encouraging but it's also it's just funny um it's just funny text like like he, he'll say, he'll say, get going on the vlog in, in funny ways. Um, but I, I agree. If you're like, you want, you want to be a millionaire, find four um, or five millionaires to hang around that kind of thing. Um, you know, you, you become your network, but on top of that, I think it's, it's also important to understand that the universe is very um, reciprocal. It's very like magnetic. And if you, and karma is a very real thing. If you put out good energy and you help other people and you put out a ton of value, um, the universe will pay you back in other ways. So while you should be surrounding yourself with entrepreneurs and, and people who are at a high level of excellence, you should also be looking to help people who are um, just getting started on their journey, you know, and that need to be high level thinkers and need, and they, they've got the energy and they've got the potential and you can kind of see it but they haven't reached, they, they haven't reached the checkpoints yet, right? They don't have the accolades yet. And so helping those people is also just, just people that are like four years younger than you, right? Like yeah. helping, helping those people through the process and through the journey. And, and hopefully they, they achieve feats that are, that are better than you or, or, you know, the same level as you, right? That's, that's what you want. You want to help them along the journey so they can reach their full potential. So that's also a very important thing is to, is to help people. And the more, more you help people, the more successful you'll be. Well, I like what you're saying. And your like profession occupation is very tied into that because if the more you give, the more you receive, if you're not putting in time to your video and you know, it doesn't come out as good and you know that it can be better, you're not going to receive as many views. It's Mm -hmm. just how the algorithm works. But if you put that time and effort in, you will receive more views, more credibility, more whatever it may be, whatever that more is. And Mm -hmm. that's where it's really important to just when, if you don't want to, like I tell people this all the time, if you don't want to do something, don't do it because you're not going to put the effort into it. When you Mm want to do something, you're passionate about something, you'll put the effort into it on the days that you don't want to do anything else. You'll be like, oh, I just like, oh, I don't feel like doing homework. Might as well do, you know edit a video, film a podcast, whatever it may be, go work out. Something productive. Don't, don't play video games. <laughs> Being productive goes in, you know, goes hand in hand with what you're, what you're doing. If you, if you want, or what you want to become, like if you want to become a millionaire, being product productive could literally be like making a new website, you know, drop shipping, whatever it may be nowadays is so popular. Like you could do that. You could, you know, do investing in stocks or whatever it may be, do some research. And that's what it really goes to show you like who, who you really are, because it's what you do in your free time and not your requirements or things you have to do that really bring you to what you want to become. Oh, a hundred percent. And, um, and that, that's so true. And using your free time strategically is very important. And one thing that, uh, so I was saying before, like universes, and I believe this, it sounds like hocus pocus BS, but I promise you, I a hundred percent believe this. And it's true. If you put out, you know, good into the world, you get good back. But if you put out good with no intention of receiving anything back, really, um, what you've done is, is you've completely given it to the world and the world has to give it back to you. Right. There's, there's just like, 
there's the end of the contract that you haven't been paid yet. You haven't been compensated yet. So starting off my career, I was like, all right, it's less important, like what I get paid and more important what I film. And it's, that's still true. Like I'm very, very picky with like who, who I work with and who I, you know, will do videos for because it's more important to me to do cool stuff and film cool stuff and film exactly what I want to. Cause I think that progresses my career and all that. But also at the beginning, I was doing free videos for everybody, right? And I was doing free videos for exactly what I wanted to film. And I got really good because I wanted to film it. And that was my free time. But also I was getting paid back in opportunities because I wasn't getting paid money. And I think that the, the way that the universe works is like I was putting out all this value for free, right? And then the universe is like, well, we got to pay him back in opportunities and experiences and all of this cool stuff. So that's, that's basically what started happening. But also I got to progress my career and, and have a portfolio and all these things that I actually wanted to do, like combat sports and, um, you know, just like different projects that really interest me. Uh, so then I kind of got my name out in those spaces and um, the opportunities found their way back to me. Well, yeah, it's important. And what I also like is that you're saying like, I still work out, like I still do jujitsu. I do these other things, but yeah, I'm also a filmmaker. And that's important because you can't just, I don't care how many people say, and I hear it on like a bunch of these entrepreneurial things, like you need to do one thing and one thing only in order to become successful. I don't think that's true solely because you're going to get burned out. You need to allocate time to other things. Like you're saying, like you can, like being a filmmaker, awesome. Like you need to edit videos. Like this is what I want to do. And obviously I'm still going to do that, but I also allocate my time towards other things so I can be productive have energy when I'm sitting at my desk and doing everything like mm -hmm. I need to do on my computer to, in order to produce the best content that I can. And that's why I think it's really important of being like a generalist in doing and trying these different things. And it'll also show you what you don't like and what you do like more than anything mm -hmm. else. Like some people don't like working out. That's fine. Then don't work out. Like at least you tried it. At least uh, I don't know about that. Out. <laughs> <laughs> or just try to, if you don't like lifting weights, go for a run. Maybe you'll like, there, I'm not a there runner. There you go. Yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. it may be. For sure. But just trying these different elements is what's going to help you out later. Like you were saying, now I have this connection with, you know, Ben that I solely because, you know, I'm a videographer, but oh, wait, I also in involved in combat sports. So this helped me, you know, get this connection at the end of the day and just having that what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the knowledge and information that you have in the connections that you had already in there helped you lead into this next thing that you wanted to do also. Yeah. And the way I came to work for Ben was I was filming my buddy, uh, Jordan Newman and Newman is kind of like Astrid's prodigy or project, whatever, however you say that word. And, uh, it, he's a Bellator fighter and he is like violent. He is so good. He is, he is going to be a champ. Like there's not a doubt in my mind, but so he wrestled for Wisconsin Whitewater, just like me. He's a bit older and he's a two-time national champ. And, uh, you know, we got to be good friends through wrestling and stuff like that, just hanging out. And then I was like, got into videos and I was like, I'm gonna make some videos of Newman. And that's how Ben, for, completely for free, right? And our team and, and all that. And that's how Askren was like, saw my work for the first time and kind of tried to hire me. And so like completely for free, the opportunities came because I put, my work out there, right. For, for him to see. I just like that when you do, like you were saying the universe, when you give, you receive it, I don't know why it works, but it does somehow, some yeah. way, you know, I don't know the why I just now. know the facts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Just like from experience, but John, we're almost out of time today. So one question I like to ask to all my guests before we go on with the rest of our day is the classic, the old the age old question is what would be one piece of final wisdom to pass on to the listeners out there? Pace is the most important thing. The, the higher pace you can, you can put out into what you care about and, and working on yourself, right? Um, that should be your primary focus, your primary goal. And if you, the more you improve yourself, the more, more life will throw opportunities your way. The, the more you improve yourself, the more, um, the more other opportunities can really see you. Like they can't see you when you don't have a whole lot going on and you haven't made yourself into a skilled, um, confident person. So work on yourself with a very high pace and, um, and everything will come from that.
keep the pace and everything will come from that. John, I love it. Guys, that's it for another episode of the Ronan Bell Show. John, thank you so much for coming on the show today, man. Is there anything that you want to plug? Dude, that was that was fun. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. You underscore brought it on. A uh, little play on my last name, John Broughton. And no, dude, this was fun. Thanks a lot. Dude, I appreciate it. So, guys, as I said before, that's it for another episode of Ronan Bell Show. Hope you guys are getting through whatever you're getting through. Have a good rest of your day. And as always, I'll just keep on keeping on.